The Oval, only on its finest voices, spreading knowledge, inspiration, and awareness to the campus at large. With a splash of campus entertainment and entertainment news, where could you go wrong? This is The Oval. Hey, and welcome to episode four of The Oval. Tonight we're gonna talk about everything from politics to entertainment news. But first, what's new this week, you guys? Oh, so one of my favorite uh, <laughs> artists uh, came out with a new album today, uh -huh. uh, Rex Orange County, Ooh, his third lovely. album. Uh, it's called Pony. I, I've only listened to a little bit of it with my uh, roommate, but uh, I plan on getting through it later, and I'm really excited about it. I love Rex Orange County. Yeah, he's great. His he's voice like, is fantastic. Yeah, really amazing. Yeah. And like, he's 21. Yeah, no, he's young. He's, he's super young. 21. It's his third album. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Is this guy like relatively new though? Because I've he's I don't kind of and he's undercover too, right? Yeah. Like not he's undercover, but underground. I mean, oh, okay. Like, yeah, <laughs> he's okay. he's coming up. Like I tried to buy tickets to see him, and it was minimum like one seventy five. So what? he's coming up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So I'm not going either. But yeah. <laughs> well, not to be a downer, but uh -oh. this is like real serious. Um, this is man called his name is Rodney Reed. He's from Texas, and there was like this murder rape thing that happened in 1996, and he's on death row for it. But the, the activist, Sean oh. King, have you heard of him? Mm. Yeah, oh, kind yeah. of. Mm -hmm. um, he's printing a petition to get him off of death row, like an appeal, since there was no DNA evidence that was linked to him, besides of like consensual. But that's pretty like... Mm. Yeah. yeah, wasn't he? He was in like a consensual relationship with the girl, yeah. right? But there was no, like, didn't his alibi not even correlate with, like, yeah, like there was no basis. Yeah, yeah, I heard about that. Like, I don't, like, I don't know the ins and outs of it, but like, I know, like, they're trying to get Kim Kardashian, like, <laughs> to talk to like the Texas government about it or whatever. And I've heard some people say that, oh, like, Texas doesn't want a lawsuit, so they're not gonna release him. I know, I didn't understand what that means. Yeah, I didn't delve too deep into it, but yeah. it's a. I don't know, it's like a weird story. They said his, her fiance was the one that actually killed her, but they're, like, the DNA evidence from that time isn't like substantiating what's really happening, so I'm just like waiting to see what's going to happen. Interesting. Mm. Oh yeah. So crap. Mm. What about you, Bonnie? What about me? Oh, um, <laughs> <laughs> let's see. Uh, recently, at the start of the year, there was a whole skirmish uh, from the commuters and residents about the parking issues that happened on campus. Um, and only recently has there just come a new email from the president of SUCO that says, um, we figured some things out, we've moved some things around, or you know, we've decided to move a couple of different spots around, like expanding the commuter lot uh, in the Hunt Union parking lot, where all of it had been taken away and a lot of it had been given to faculty. So that's just like one of the small changes that they have proposed. They said they're gonna do that in the like break in between fall and spring semester, and so, when we come back in the spring, it should be um, a little different, and they're going to see how that works out. And I and I think it'll be good. It seems like from the email that they sent, uh, it took into effect account like a lot of the things that uh, students voiced at the student forum that mm -hmm. they had to ask about like what we should do about the parking. Yeah. So um, you know, all goes well. I'm I'm really hoping that it works out because I'm still a commuter and I still have one more semester to keep driving around. So, yeah. oh, so you, do <laughs> you know. Drive. Yeah. Yeah, because I've, I've, I've heard you talk about, you know, it a lot. So yeah, saying. you know. So at the start of the semester, it was kind of, like, troublesome and getting used to the changes. And, like, so if they find a way to kind of fix it in the best of both worlds kind of thing, so be it. You know, I'm, I'm excited to see. Yeah. 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 All right, guys, we have to take a short break, but we'll be right back. Welcome back, guys. We're here with our political host, Devon. So what do you have for us tonight? All right, so we are at risk for another potential government shutdown, when, which may occur in 17 days. <coughs> November 21st is the deadline. As you all know, the last government shutdown lasted 35 days, was the longest government shutdown in U.S. history, and it cost over 300,000 of workers, federal workers to be out of work, and a good portion of those workers still had to go to work. They just couldn't get paid. So what are your thoughts about that? And President, President Trump did say yesterday that um, he, like, toyed around with the idea a bit about just letting the government shut down. Hmm. So. Well, it's exciting, huh? It's <laughs> uh, exciting. <laughs> I, I think just, it, it sucks. I know? just don't understand, like, 
first of all, what does this depend on? Like, <laughs> oh well, yeah. from my understanding of it, I think they're trying to plan a budget. I think I don't quote me on that because I haven't really looked that far into it. But I do know he's toying what they love and shut down because, as you know, they're pursuing impeachment <laughs> proceedings against him. So you know, he's petty. He's a petty person. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. You read my mind. I was like, oh, sorry. <laughs> no, 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 it's okay. I was saying, like, he's really toying around with this government because he has the power to. He just, he seems very reactionary and impulsive. Like, just because he has the power to do it, he'll do it, no matter who's at risk or what's at risk, you know? Yeah. So, I feel like the basis of the shutdown isn't really, like, a tangible thing or, like, I don't understand it either. So, it's just like, oh, let's see what happens, kind of thing. <coughs> if it shut down, sorry, no, <laughs> but if it shuts okay. down, I believe this would be the third shutdown in his presidency presidency term or whatever hmm. and he's been in office for three years so that mean it would have shut down every year he's been in office <laughs> basically <laughs> and it's and the kind of thing is is like president obama also had a shutdown but that's because there was an unwillingness of the house and the senate to kind of work on obamacare when they were trying to get that passed and get the budget for that uh versus you know, th- it, it, you know, since then, uh, Trump's cases is that uh, it was things for like the border wall and for something like this. And he's just being petty and just kind of <coughs> using, you know, using thousands of people's lives, federal workers lives um, and their pays to kind of just, you know, have a back and forth and just try and make a point. And it sucks. You know, it, like we can't keep like we can't keep doing this and we certainly can't afford to keep doing this. It sucks. Like, I'm just going to keep saying it sucks. <laughs> <until> <laughs> yeah. I just think that like, um. Like it's not it's not just him who's involved in the shutdown. Like it's not it's not all on him. It's just the fact that like I always talk about this, like it's just so polarized politically that like I feel like no matter what the guy tries to do and vice versa, like what the Democrats try to do against him, it's just not gonna work because no one listens to anyone anymore. Mm-hmm. Like the sen- like the house, everyone like just is against everyone when it comes to the right and the left. I mean, it's super unfair that people have to lose out on money people with families especially around like the holiday season like november 21st like you said when everyone's yeah when everyone's trying to get that extra couple of dollars to spend money on you know their kids and stuff it's super frustrating i just wish that people could just sit down and have a conversation and they could maybe figure the budget out Mm -hmm. like a politician should do unfortunately but it just doesn't seem like that's gonna happen yeah it just sucks that every year it's always around the same time too because like last year i think it shut down like a week before thanksgiving not thanksgiving christmas and it went well into the new year like to what i think i forgot the exact date but it was like the middle of january it went into and it caused a lot of things to back up so yeah Mm -hmm. yeah well, it's unfair. I don't see what's you know what it's going to accomplish besides I guess what is it going to do? Bully people into <laughs> China? Yeah, exactly. Like I don't understand. But um, thank you for that, Devon. We'll be right back after we take another break. Hey guys, welcome back. We're here with our entertainment host Jada. So. What's cool. the tea this week? So, I have some terrible news to report to you guys. Oh. Uh, but the, inter- the entertainment industry says goodbye to John with his news. Yes, he died October 29th. That's like Great Tuesday. Actor. Yeah, at 77 at his home in Sherman Oaks, California. And, you know, I'm, we talking about Friday. We talking about Pops. We talking about... <laughs> we talking about Grandpa, like the Boondocks, the boondocks everything. Right. So, you know, this... This kind of like has shaken the industry up a little bit, like especially the Wayne brothers. Like they were like this close to him, especially on the sitcom Mm -hmm. Mm because he played pops. Like he was like a lot of uh, father figure. Yeah. And you know, I'm just I'm just in disbelief because you know, like he's very funny. He was a comedian. He was an actor, and I feel like he taught lessons, especially like in the Friday movies. Like he played Ice Cube's um, dad. Mm -hmm. Like like I said, like he's like that father figure. So like this this. I don't know, like, the whole, inter- <laughs> the whole entertainment industry is just, like, in s- such disbelief. But 70, 77, that's, that's pretty young. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah the like, question, too. And, like, nobody knows, like, why, how or why he passed away. It's, it's just, I don't know. Like, how many guys feel about that? Like, I don't know. Do y'all know who, like, do y'all, do y'all know who he is? I, like, I knew yeah. of him. I, I knew of him uh, from the, his uh, character in the Boondocks, yeah. And it was, oh, like, okay. And so, you know, so I, I used to uh, watch a little bit of that, like, uh, on Adult Swim late night, you know, and stuff. So I, okay. I so when I when I read that that was him, I'm like, oh, you know, I felt yeah. awful because you, you know, know I, no shade, you know, he's a black icon. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so, you know, he's all like the, you know, the black um, 
movies and the black mm-hmm. TV shows. Right, yeah. I feel like um, some actors are just like larger than life, so it's like you feel like they'll live on forever, and when they do pass, it's like you weren't expecting it because yeah. they've been around for so long and they had these staple roles in black culture and like entertainment culture. So it's like he's, he's yeah, he died. But, he died? yeah, but think about it. Like, he's not somebody that's not. I'm not gonna say he's not big, but he's not somebody that's like talked about a lot. Yeah. But I think that's what makes him more like. Yeah, I agree with that. Because you mm-hmm. know, it's like like they were like, damn, like this is somebody that that's the voice of the of Grandpa and the Boondocks. Mm-hmm. Like I, all I hear is John with the spoon. Like you was in Soul Plane, <laughs> acting like the blind man, touching touching women's booties and stuff. So it's yeah. like it's just we just know him for that role, mm-hmm. and I mean like I think he like he will be missed. He yeah. definitely Because yeah. every time I'm like, I'm going to like watch a whole episode of Boondocks now just because of him. Like, I just hope, yeah, they better not replace him with nobody like in the yeah. show because I heard the Boondocks are supposed to be coming yeah, back. Yeah, they are coming back. Yeah, mm-hmm. so you know, like, it, it is hard, especially when you want to make reboots and, and recast stuff like that. So mm. I'm, I'm just in disbelief that it happened. So what do you think? Do you think they should like kill off the character or something? Like, how do you think that should go? <laughs> <coughs> I don't know. Can't they like reuse the voice? They could. It, they could do yeah. that. They That's could do that. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. If they find someone like almost exactly the same, but even then, it's kind of yeah. hard to replicate exactly everything that John Witherspoon was probably doing with that character. Right. Yeah. You know, so, I, I know, yeah. like I know, BET gonna probably play Friday like on budget calls. <laughs> so, you know, like, <laughs> on repeat. Yeah, on repeat over and over and over, or like they're gonna do like a whole shit. <coughs> like, yeah, probably. and I think it's good that the um, networks do stuff like that yeah. because I feel like yeah. it's important important that people know who he is. But isn't it crazy how all these like great stars only recognized in death when they when they were yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. recognized before, or that they get like, recognized way more? Yeah. Um, you know, once they die, it's like oh well, now let's take a look at all the things right. that they've yeah. done, and it's like. Well, maybe I wish there was maybe a chance to do that for maybe him and maybe other actors yeah. way before they, you know, do pass or something. But I appreciate yeah. um, actors like that because even though like he's not an Academy Award winner, yeah, he's so like people are gonna remember him for the roles that he played on television and the roles that he played in film. Yeah. And I feel like those are the best actors. Cause, you know, they always talk about how Jackie Chan don't got a, a Emmy or how Leonardo DiCaprio didn't have one and now he has one. But I feel like people always remember you for the roles that you play. And I feel like that's way more important than some trophy or some whatever golden globe or whatever that <laughs> they get. So that's like, that's all I'm it, it takes like true talent to be recognized for the stuff yeah. that you've done regardless if you have a trophy or not like yeah. if, if you like if people know if people get upset about your death and like even if you aren't like a very large actor or whatever i think that even speaks more volumes about what kind of a person and an actor that that person was you know mm-hmm. i think it's just like yeah. that kind of a thing yeah. Yeah. yeah all right thank you jada so much unfortunately that's all the time we have tonight guys but stay tuned every week don't forget to follow us on twitter at the oval tv and we'll see you all next week bye <laughs>